Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to add items to Survival Game Kit. Um, in this video I'm just going to be taking you through the basic steps to adding an item. Um, because there are a lot of different types of item um, in the system, um, some are a lot more uh, complex to add um, and then we've got more simple items. Um, I'm just going to be taking you through the sort of basic steps of adding an item um, and filling out all of the settings that um, it doesn't really matter what item you're adding, uh, these settings you have to fill out um, uh, for like UI and names and meshes and things like that. Um, so for the sake of this video I'm just going to be adding a consumable item because it's a fairly basic item. Um, but it can give you an idea of what you have to go through, exactly how to set things up and that sort of stuff. So we're going to start by going to our blueprints folder, then to items and then item list. And you can see in here we've got all of our items um, and you can select any one of them to see the uh, item settings. Um, but for this video we're going to be adding a brand new one so I'm just going to click this add button here. Scroll down and I'm going to double click the row name and I'm going to call mine, um, I'm just going to call my new item. Um, you can call yours whatever you like. You might want to follow the naming scheme that's included so put the item type first and uh, and then underscore your item name because it makes it a lot easier to uh, find items later on but we'll just uh, call this new item so starting off we've got all of our settings are set to sort of none and default so we'll start by uh, naming it I'm just gonna call this uh, video item so this is the name this is what shows up in the UI um, then we've got short name this is used when um, there's not enough space to display the full um, items name so for this I'll just put VI or something like that um, description you can fill this out you know with as much detail as you like this is basically information um, that's shown when you hover over an item in your inventory um, weight is is the items weight so you can set this to whatever you like I'll set mine to 0.5 uh, then we've got width and size so this is how many slots in the inventory the item takes up um, for this video I can make mine say uh, we'll set it to two height and one width um, so it's a long item but remember we can rotate items as well um, so but I'll just set mine to that um, you you can set yours however you like um, allow stacking basically means whether or not you can have more than one item sort of stacked up um, in the item space um, so for this I'm going to enable it um, actually I'll leave this disabled for now um, allow quick bind basically means that you can drag the item to the quick bar um, and it will sort of um, bind to the quick bar so you can uh, use your number buttons to select it quickly um, I'm going to leave that on um, allow dropping basically means that the player can drop it from their inventory um, so I'm going to keep this turned on as well Max stack, this is only used if allow stacking is true, so uh, I'm going to leave this as is, but you know, if you wanted 100 items to be able to stack in, in one um, stack, you can set that here. Um, inventory action and world actions, what these are, are basically inventory actions are when you right click an item in the inventory, you get that drop down menu. Um, these are the uh, actions that you can do um, in that menu. So if I click add, um, you can see it adds an entry and I've got inventory actions so this gives me a list of things that I can do with the item. Um, if you set this, if I was to say set this to equip clothing and I hadn't filled out the equipment details properly all that will happen is it will give me an error saying you know this item is not equipment and nothing will happen. Um, so depending on what your item is you can have you know you can set the actions for it you can set multiple ones as well so say you had a consumable and it was also storage you could say um, set it to open and um, consume um, but I'm just gonna have consume because uh, we're just making a consumable today um, and then the action name is just is just the UI name of the button so I'll call this use I like to keep it capitals because capitals are used a lot in the system so um, it looks a little bit nicer. Then world actions are when you look at the item when it's in the world um, you get the options menu. Again this is the options that come up there so by default you've just got pickup 
Um, you could add um, a new one and you could set it to, uh, I believe, consumes here. So you can set it con to consume. So if you did this, um, you'd be able to just consume the item straight away in the world um, without having to pick it up. Um, but for this video, I'm just going to leave that alone. Um, pick up is there by default, so you shouldn't have to add that. Um, but if that is missing for whatever reason, you might want to add it back in. Um, but that should just be there. Um, and that lets us pick the item up. Um, then we have a quick use action. So as I said earlier, if you have um, allow quick bind, this is when, say, I put the item to the number one quick slot and I press number one, this is what the action that will be done. So because it's consumable, I'm just going to set this to consume. Then we've got our mesh and skeletal mesh. Um, I'll go a little bit more into detail with the skeletal mesh option in the um, adding ranged weapon video um, that you can watch um, after this one if you like. Um, but for this, we're just going to use stag mesh. Most items in your game are going to use stag meshes anyway, so we'll just use the stag mesh for now. Um, I'm going to select the uh, one meter cube just because it's easy to see and it's there. Um, one thing that I strongly recommend you do if you're using your own meshes is make sure it has collision. To do that, uh, select your mesh. Then I'm going to click this magnifying glass so it takes me there. You can open up your mesh. And once we're in here, click collision and simple collision. You can see I've got this green box. That's the, the mesh's collision. If your item does not have this, um, you need to add it. To do that, you can go to the collisions drop down, and there's different options um, you can try out to get the best match for your uh, item. Um, and Epic have documentation on this as well, so you can look that up if you like. Um, but your item must have this sort of green outline, um, otherwise you won't be able to pick it up. Um, so that's super important. But we can close that now, because uh, we know our mesh has collision. Um, world class, um, again, I'll go into more detail about this in the ranged uh, weapon video. Uh, but for the sake of this video, we're just going to leave this as the stack master item. Uh, pickup animation is the animation played when we pick the item up. There's no included um, animation for this, so this is just set as none. If you have one, you can add that there if you like. Um, we have the icon background color. So this is the um, color of, um, of the background of the item when it's in the inventory. I can show you a quick example um, if we hit play. Um, I'll pick up the health bottle. You can see this is sort of a dark red behind it. Um, so you can set whatever co color you like. You can also set the alpha, so how see-through the color is. Uh, next, we have UI details. Um, so here is where you set your inventory icon. Um, so inventory icon is going to... Your dimensions for the image are going to depend on um, your width and height. Because if you have a very long item, then your image for your um, item is going to need to be long as well. Otherwise, you're going to be sort of stretching a square image. So um, for this item, uh, we saw earlier actually that the health the health drink is actually um, health drink uh, image is actually designed for a long item. So I'm just going to use the health drink icon. Um, I will go into more detail about um, image sizes uh, in the icon maker video because survival game kit comes with an icon maker blueprint so i'll go into a little bit more detail about that uh, in that video that you can go check out um, now if you like when you're setting your icons which would make sense um, then we have the move icon so this is just when you're moving the item when you hold down and drag the item around this is the icon that's used um, the move icon size override, so um, this is basically how you can set the size of the image um, to whatever you want. This will only affect the move icon though, remember that. Um, and you have to tick this on and uh, set the values you want. Um, for the most part, you probably won't need to use this, but it's a useful tool to have um, the option for. Then we've just got the quick slot icon, so it's pretty self-explanatory. It's the icon in the quick slot. Uh, the vendor icon, this is used whenever the item appears in uh, the vendor's UI. Um, equipment slot icon, this is used when the item's um, equipped in, in a clothing slot or an equipment slot. Um, again, we don't really need to set these um, because this is a drink. Um, weapon slot, again, this is for when the item's in the weapon slot. 
Um, these are used more for clothing and weapons, obviously. Um, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to copy this. Um, actually, our quick slot icon, uh, I think the health drink has, yeah, a quick slot icon. This is a square icon, whereas this one is a long one for the inventory. So I'm just going to copy this and paste this into our vendor as well. Um, I'm going to leave these two as none because this isn't a weapon or an equipment item. Um, then uh, we'll set up our consumable details because this is going to be a consumable. I'll quickly talk you through uh, these. So first thing we need to do is uh, set can consume to true. Um, so this tells the system that the item can be consumed. Um, we have our stats here. So um, this is how it affects the health, hunger, thirst. Um, so if I was to put minus 20 here, when the item's consumed, it would um, damage the player by 20 health. Um, but I'm gonna set mine to 10. So it'll give 10 health back when we use this item. Um, but say minus 10, um, actually we'll just leave it at zero for, for the sake of this. But you can use minus or plus values for these um, and have those work. Um, stop bleeding. Um, when the item's consumed, if, if the character is bleeding, it will stop their bleeding. Um, use amount is pretty cool. You can uh, set the item to be able to be used multiple times. Um, I think, yeah, the um, health drink here, I can actually use it multiple times. You can see it says four out of five. If I drink it, it goes down. Um, so that's how you set the uh, use amount there. Um, quick note about the use amount is, um, your item can't be stackable um, if you're using use amount. You can only have item be stackable or the item use use amount. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, replace item can basically be set up so that um, if say we wanted it so we get an empty bottle when we finish this drink, we could tick replace empty item and we could have a separate empty item, uh, sorry, empty bottle item and it will uh, remove this item and replace it with an empty bottle uh, once we finish the consume. So uh, that's all our consumable settings. Um, I'll untick replace item because we're not using that right now. Um, and then the last few settings are down here at the bottom. We have um, the fuel time. So this is how long the item will burn for as fuel in the cooking component or the crafting component. Um, item offsets are used uh, when your item's in the world, say it goes into, it might go into the ground a little bit, so you can increase the Z um, access, um, and that'll move the item up a little bit. Um, you will have to, if you change this value, um, you'll have to delete the item that's in the world and drag it back in um, to see the effect, but that will um, move the item a little bit, which is good for adjustments. And then lastly, we have item sounds. So here you can um, set different sounds for all of these different actions. So say if I wanted it when this item's crafted, it played um, I don't know, a gunshot sound, you could do that. And then if I wanted to add another one, just click the add button and you can set another sound. And uh, we're pretty much done in here now for our um, item. Um, everything looks good. So uh, you can just go ahead and save it. Next, we're gonna actually create our world item. So to do that, we'll go to our showcase. We'll uh, stop the game here. Um, I'll jump into blueprints, items, and then uh, world items. Now, um, something to note is items in the attachment items, holdable items, or um, any master lifts or anything like that, um, do not drag these into the world. Don't drag these items into the world. These are used uh, by the system when the player is actually holding the item. Um, items that should be in the world, which are the ones you see on the screen now, um, those are world items. So if we open up this uh, world item folder, you can see we've got all of the different items in here that we can just drag in and they work. So uh, for this, we just need to right click the static mesh item. Um, again, this goes back to um, our item being a static mesh, so we'll use the static mesh item. Um, and we'll rename this to uh, video item underscore wi. And I put the underscore wi at the end just so you know it's a world item and it's an item that can be dragged into the world. Uh, once we've done that, we can open it up. 
Oh, just to clarify as well, don't duplicate the static mesh item. We want to um, create a child. So this option up here, create child blueprint class. Um, if you duplicate it, it won't work and you'll and it'll be broken. Um, so we've got our child blueprint here. It's easy to tell if it's child blueprint because it will say uh, parent class is static master item. Um, and then in here, in our class defaults, we can set the item. Uh, so we'll click the drop down, and then we can search for our, um, I think I called it new. Yeah, so it's using our um, the row name we set, the first thing we set. So new item, and just like that, we've got our mesh that pops up. Uh, we can set the item amount. By default, I usually say just keep this at one. Um, our item isn't stackable either, so I'm just gonna leave it as one, but uh, if you wanted to, you could set this to say 50, um, and as long as your item is stackable, then that will work just fine. So, uh, and just like that, we're done. So we can save this, and now we can drag our item into the world, and we can hit play, and we can look at it, and we've got our video item. Uh, our options are to pick up, so we'll pick it up. You can see we're using the health drink. Um, we don't have description, because we didn't fill that out, but I can right click, I can use it, um, and we've used the item. Um, my health was at max anyway, but it will have affected the health. Um, and just like that, we've added our new item. Um, so that's pretty much it for this video. Um, I just wanted to go over some of the basic settings, so hopefully you found this useful. Um, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Um, don't forget to check out my other videos, and um, thank you for watching.